In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. So anyone remember anything from Daniel from the last three chapters? Anything? Anything you remember from the last three chapters? Yeah, the, the three of them. Uh huh. Okay, so that was last chapter. Yes, the three young men. Um, good. Sure. Hmm. Uh, yeah, the interpretation of the dream. Okay, this is gonna come become handy today, actually. Good, good. You guys are paying attention. I love that. That's good. Uh, I'm not good uh, in, in recapping things. Adel usually does that for me. He's very good in like getting things together. Um, so we started Daniel, just to give you an, a quick recap. Uh, we, usually Adel says, you know, you know, Abraham, Father Abraham, you know, uh, he left his land, he went to Ca land of Canaan, and then he uh, had his only son offered him to God, and God saved his son and redeemed. And then from there, we know uh, Isaac, okay. Isaac, and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we have Isaac, Jacob, and then um, Jacob has... 12 sons, right? And from the 12 sons, we have then the 12 tribes of Israel. And the 12 tribes of Israel, uh, eventually because of Joseph, because of famine, they go to Egypt. They stay in Egypt uh, for quite some time, almost 500 years. And then they are enslaved. So Moses comes along. Everyone familiar with Moses? Have you ever seen uh, the, the, the Prince of Egypt movie, the cartoon, the Disney? Yeah, um, please come forward here. We can uh, come, come, come. I'm shy. <laughs> I'm coffee. <laughs> You're shy. I'm coffee. Huh? Okay. <laughs> uh, and then you know they they you know the ten uh plagues of the the, the ten plagues, and then Moses leaves, and they cross the Red Sea. They go. Um, and then Joshua leads them into the land of Canaan, and then they establish a kingdom after many judges. Then the, you have the first king, King Saul, and then King Saul does not turn out to be good, that good. So then you have King David who establishes the kingdom, and then King Solomon comes. He starts very good, but then he messes it up, and because of that, there is a split in the kingdom. There is the northern and the southern. The southern is called usually the uh, uh, kings of Judah. There are king, the kingdom of Judah, and the north is the uh, Israel because 10 tribes and two tribes in the south. And then from there, we know that from Judah, Christ is going to come. But then from um, the, 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 the Assyrians and then the Babylonians and Nebuchadnezzar, uh, they start um, destroying the northern kingdom and then they come into the southern and then they take uh, many uh, people captives. And one of those is Daniel and the three young men. Okay. I give it a really quick recap. Okay. I try to do the idle thing. <laughs> um, so we are here with Daniel in a strange land, alone, away from power. They don't have anything and they can only count on God. We have the first chapter, right? They're sticking to the principle. They have a principle, stick to God. The way you live, uh, it's a lifestyle. It's not just uh, rituals. So they stick to lifestyle that grant them 10 times, you know, better wisdom than everybody else. Then you have chapter two, right? The great uh, dream interpreted by Daniel, right? And we said something important about that by the end of chapter 2. King Nebuchadnezzar, if you switch to chapter 2, at the end of the chapter 2, King Nebuchadnezzar <clears throat> says something very important. Uh, 
uh, in verse 47, the king answered Daniel and said, truly your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings and revealer of secrets since you could reveal the secret. Okay? So this is very important. Now you have this king who knew nothing about God, but because of the faithfulness of Daniel and the three young men, now this king started to be introduced to God. Okay? I don't know why I got disconnected. Sorry, you guys didn't miss uh, much. Sorry, got disconnected for a second here. Okay. So, um, uh, let's see. We lost someone here. Okay. Hopefully, we get them back. Uh, so, yeah, many times we also look at God like, yeah, very impressive. But you know what? Stay where you are, where I am. We're cool. Okay. I don't want anything to do with you. I'm happy where I am. So this is end of chapter two. Okay. Chapter three comes, you know, because of the dream, you know, you remember the statue, the head of gold, the silver, uh, right? The bronze and, and. so King Nebuchadnezzar, like why just only the head? Why am I just the head of gold? So I'm going to do a big statue full of gold because I want to be forever king and god said mm -mm, no and then three young men very faithful again stood up to the king and said if you want to kill us kill us you want to throw us into the fire furnace sure by all means so he did so but then he was surprised to see them the three in and the fourth is like the son of god and he pulls them out and he says something else about God. You notice that every, almost now, uh, at the end of every chapter, it's kind of like concluded with, wow, God is great. But every time he's going into a deeper uh, relationship with God. So he says the following. Nebuchadnezzar, so end of chapter 3, uh, spo uh, spoke uh, in chapter 3, verse 28. He says, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they have uh, uh, and they have frustrated king's word uh, and yielded their bodies that they should. And nor worship any God except their own God. Therefore. I make a decree that any people, nation, language, which speak against a miss, uh, where am I? Yeah. Against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made an ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this. So first, it says like, oh, you have very good wisdom. You must have God on your side. Second chapter. He says, wow, I'm impressed. Nice God. Third chapter, no, this is a really good God. Nobody should speak bad words against God. So it's kind of like at the beginning, good God, stay. Second chapter, third chapter, no, this is important. Nobody should speak against this God. This is where we stopped and this is where we're going to pick up because you're going to see the theme now. He is developing this relationship deeper and deeper and deeper with God. Okay. And it's just sending us this message that many times in my own relationship, even though even I'm born into uh, like Christianity, even I'm born into orthodoxy, we all at some point go through the same development. Okay. Many of us, some of us might not. An example of that, like, uh, for example, you have uh, John the Baptist, for example. Like, he never did any miracles. He never, uh, he was never, like, uh, did something huge. 
like Daniel or the three, you know, he never went into like despair or like lost faith or like he's right always with God. And that's what made the Lord Jesus Christ say, look at this man. He is the best, you know, born of women. Okay. But most of us, we go through this development, like, yeah, impressive God. And then the next step, well, I don't like anyone to say anything against God. I'm not going to stand up to this God. So there is reverence. The third step is to have a relationship. But that relationship sometimes does not just come that easy. Hopefully we all just respond to the word, respond to God. But sometimes it takes uh, drastic measures from God for me to respond. Okay. But also he leaves me the decision. So let's go into chapter four with that mindset. Is this good? I know we've been away for a few weeks. So just wanted to warm you up for what to come. So let's read uh, chapter four. Daniel chapter 4. Nebuchadnezzar the king. He closed chapter 3 with Nebuchadnezzar to everyone. Now he's continuing. Nebuchadnezzar the king to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Listen to the next one. It's extremely shocking. Peace be multiplied to you. This man that we're facing here is a man of war, violence, uh, like a tyrant, like nobody stands up to him. He is very tough. And all of a sudden you find this guy like, peace? What? What's going on here? Where is this change of language coming from? Peace be multiplied to you. Something is not sitting well, right? And it's like, this time is like, you know, Daniel is, is, is writing it from a different perspective. He's getting at the end of the story and then he's going to tell us why he's saying that, okay? So he goes in and, and says, I thought it good to declare the signs and the wonders that the most high God has worked for me something drastic happened what is it that happened to you how great are his signs and how mighty his wonders his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation now he was saying like god is amazing nobody should speak bad about god now he started to say he is reigning over me. This God is my God. And then you continue. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid and thoughts on my bed and the visions of my head troubled me contradicts can you pick up the contradiction here in these two verses what are the two contradicting ideas happening so the introduction that we just read up to verse three is is the conclusion but now he's gonna tell us how he reached that conclusion okay okay what are the contradict Thing, uh, ideas here. Read it again. Huh? It was flourishing. Very good. So you have two contradicting ideas. He's saying, oh, "I was a trust. I'm okay. I have everything. I'm a king. Everything is at the dispense of my hand." I'm at rest. I'm flourishing. Like if anything, like I'm multiplying. But then all of a sudden, now you have all this power. You have all this wealth. You know, uh, this guy at this point, like he was king over 
all the uh, almost all the kingdoms so everything is at his hands so he says i was happy but then i was afraid <laughs> seriously seriously what are you afraid of and this is where many times it hit us fake fake peace and fake security all right many times we have this idea that you know if i have enough money i'll be rested if i have enough friends i'll be happy if i have a good position i'm comfortable if i have a good career i'll be flourishing right but then you hit a point where like that's not what i want no no something more something is missing okay and this is what's happening with him just something small as like he said well a vision uh of thoughts on my uh and and thoughts on my bed visions of my head troubled me seriously like just thoughts trouble you and isn't that what many times trouble us too even if you have everything but once you start having some thoughts some anxieties some uh fears you know some stress right and many times you see it like especially with the uh, celebrities you know some celebrity if anyone would like to come to the front here will be appreciated because then we can have a, a good discussion but anyway it's okay please feel free reach to the front <laughs> You see it with celebrities, like they reach everything. They've got everything. But many of them, or some of them, I would say, you find them committing suicide or like falling into depression or falling into some kind of like, they, they, they get in, uh, in trouble with the law or like with their spell, something, you know? And you have everything. What's going on? Why would it go wrong? Because this guy, Nebuchadnezzar, he had everything uh, in his hand. He wanted the Garden of Eden. He wanted to recreate some kind of luxury. And then he get in trouble. So he said, just because of vision, just because of thoughts, and I think uh, nowadays, uh, when you have like those bad thoughts, those anxieties and depression and things, you go to a therapist, right? To, uh, we should, yeah, uh, to help us process those thoughts. I'm not saying it's bad, but most of the time, if the therapist is not on the same page, like understanding that I am a human being, I have a soul, I have a spirit, and I have a body. And all these, you know, there is a conflict between all of this. If the therapist is not aware of that, okay, could lead me to destruction. Could get into my head where this type of guys are like, do whatever you like. Whatever that pleases you, you can do. Right? And this is what he was doing. Whatever that pleased him, he was going for it. And still not satisfied. So... Let's continue. Therefore, I issued a decree to bring in all wise men of Babylon before me that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Then the magicians, astrologers, uh, the Chaldeans, and the soothers came in, and I told them of the dream. You notice something here, right? Remember the first dream, what he did? What did he do with the first dream? Huh? But the first dream, what, what's different than first dream compared this to this one? He's telling them the dream. The first dream, he said, uh-uh, I'm not telling you the dream. You have to tell me the dream and the interpretation of the dream. So now you can see there is a shift. The first dream, he was not really troubled so much. But now he's so much troubled to the point that he just wants anything to comfort him. Anything. Even if it's a lie. He's okay with it. Just comfort me. Tell me a lie. 
it's okay, right? And so, but they did not make known to me its interpretation, right? And this is what I, I'm saying, like when you go to getting bad, like advice from someone who is not understanding the rights, uh, uh, the right way of, of me as a person connected to God, I need like, then I'm getting into those advisors, okay? So he goes through that. And sometimes we do the same thing. I'm troubled, I'm stressed. So I go ask friends, you know, ask like uh, wise people outside, right? And then finally I come back to God. Listen to what he says about Daniel, amazing. But at last, Daniel came before me. His name is Bal. Is the spirit of God, of the holy God. What did he say? Read it again. And I, and in him, in him is the spirit of the holy God. And I told the dream before him and so on. What's what's the Lord um, in the Bible, in the New Testament, it says what? You are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit dwells in you. So if, if you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit dwells in you, then automatically people should see that. Who saw that in the Old Testament? Napakas Nazar, he saw it in Daniel. Yes. Yes, it's a different uh, way uh, in the Old Testament, but yet he can uh, recognize that. Yeah. Because of the way he interprets, like he just knows that God is with Daniel. Like something is different about Daniel. Okay. So that's what difference we can make to people around us. When we are faithful in the little that we are interested with. So he says, and he acknowledges that God is holy and pure. Then Balthasar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy God is in you. Look what how, how he's talking to him. And no secret troubles you. Explain to me the visions of my dream that I have seen and its interpretation. These were the visions of my head while on my bed. Now look at this vision. I was looking and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens and it could be seen to the ends of all the earth. Its leaves were lovely, its fruit abundant and in it was food for all. The beast of the field found sheep under it. The birds of the heavens dwelt in the branches, and all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the vision of my head while on my bed, and there was a watcher. A watcher. Underline this word. A watcher. And underline the next one. A holy one coming down from heaven. What is that? Any idea? Wild guess. A watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven. What do you think? Hmm? The Holy Spirit? Uh, okay. Sure. Another part of the Holy Spirit? Hmm? Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, or the Word of God, the watcher. The one who sees everyone, the one who sees everything. The one who sees everything, a watcher, a seer, okay? A holy one who came down from heaven incarnate. 
incarnation, right? So <clears throat> let's read a little bit and I'm gonna go back and to explain a little bit more. So, uh, and he cried out, you notice, he cried out, uh, cried loud and said thus, chop down the tree and cut off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beast get out from under it and the birds from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump and roots in the earth and they're lined up. Leave the stump and roots in the earth. Bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field, let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him gaze with the beast on the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from that of man. Let him be given the heart of beast and let seven times pass over him. Seven times. Pass over him. Every time the number seven is mentioned in the Bible is what? Perfection. So he basically bringing some calamity to, to chasten this person. Okay. To perfection. And then he continues. Uh, This decision is by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the word of the Holy One. Who is the word of the Holy One? Jesus Christ, right? In order that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, gives it to whomever he will and sets over it the lowest of men. So, this dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Balthazar, declare its interpretation since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able for the spirit of the holy God is in you. You can hear again the, the same thing, what the spirit of God dwells in you. Then Daniel, whose name was Balthazar, was astonished for a time, and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke and said, Balthazar, do not let the dream or its interpretation trouble you. Balthazar answered and, and said, My lord, may the dream concern those who hate you, and its interpretation concern your enemies. Can you imagine what happened here? You know, Daniel is sitting, standing, and he's like telling him the dream. Oh, you know, I saw this big tree in the midst of the earth and so many birds and everything. Like, And then all of a sudden, Daniel like troubled. Daniel got troubled. Why? He's going to tell him the interpretation. He tells him, the tree that you saw, which grew and became strong, whose height reached to heavens. We are in Daniel chapter 4, verse 20. Daniel chapter 4, verse 20. And which could be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely and its fruits abundant, in which was food for all under, which the beast of the field dwelt, and in whose branches and birds in heaven had their home. It is you O king it is you that big tree is you and you notice what it says the the tree was where was where in the center don't we all love to be the center of attention don't we all love to be you know center for everyone to revolve around us right and when that is not the case my head spins around my head goes wondering what is wrong with me and if you are like this king and you with all this power oh boy you will make everyone 
you know, forcibly revolve around you, no matter who they are. And he did in the last chapter, right? He made sure that he is the center and everybody knows it and everyone declares it. And if you don't, you're dead. But the three men said no. Not even, not even close. Our God is strong. He moves on and sees this dream. And Daniel tells him, you are the center. You like to be the center of attention. And how many of us, me and you and everyone, we love to be the center of attention. Of course, I don't want to bring up again the, the new experience with the Instagram. <laughs> you know, but uh, this Instagram thing is like just something else. Is like, uh, yeah, it's new to me, but I know you guys know, you know, it's just like it, it, it just makes you really the center of attention and just like how many likes and how many, you know, shares and how many comments and it's just like, wow, truly like you feel like, wow, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, everybody loves, uh, yes, Marie. Why, um, why did you start one <clears throat> yeah because at the beginning he just wanted anything to comfort him but then when nothing worked he went okay i know who will tell me the truth and that's why you notice that you know when 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 daniel was like uh, astonished and his thoughts were troubled you you read that in in verse 19 he told him uh, uh, don't worry okay just tell me whatever it is no no matter how bad it is just tell me what it means and he told him you think that you're the center of attention you are the center of this universe you think like you're that good okay let me tell you how god <laughs> <laughs> yeah because no because god revealed it to him what god is about to do yeah it's about, okay that just as... yeah and in spite of all of that he's not afraid to say it to his face huh no but sometimes you you're like what do I do with this God? Like you're in the midst. Do you want me to say it just as is? It's like, this is too much. Is he going to handle it? Look what Daniel is going to do. There is something very, very beautiful. Daniel is going like, he's going to speak God's words, but then he's going to speak his own words. Anointed with the spirit of God. Yes. Anointed with the Spirit of God. Listen to him. So he tells him, you think you're the center of attention. Now, each one of us, I want you to put yourself in that position. Do you think you're the center of attention? You think you're the center of the universe? Like you think you, you're that good? Think twice. Because, and <clears throat> you, O king, have been grown and become strong. For your greatness has grown and reaches to heavens and your dominion to the end of the earth. And as much as the king saw a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, chop down the tree. No matter how good you are, you always going to be judged by the watcher. You're always going to be judged by the watcher. The watcher is the Lord, the word of God. The word of God should always be in my heart because this is what's going to, you know, you know, like uh, uh, pierce me in my heart. Like it's going to cut in my heart like a sword. And if there's anything, the watcher is going to say, be careful. So the watcher, he says, chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth, bound with 
a band of iron bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet and dew of heaven and let him gaze with the beast of the field till seven times pass over. This is the interpretation of king. And this is the decree of the most high, which has come upon my Lord, the king. Now you see how Daniel, even though he's giving a very harsh message with gentleness, with love, with respect, he's telling him so. One of the fruit of the spirit is what? Gentle. What is the difference between being gentle? What's the definition of being gentle? Look it up. Hmm? Did you find it? No? Okay. Okay, character. And if you look down for more definitions, gentleness, it has to do more with correcting with no harsh words. You found that? Very, when, especially when making corrections. Okay. And this is how you see Daniel. Like he's already displaying some of the, like those, the, the fruit of the spirit. Being gentle. And why God is leaving a stump and leave, letting the roots in the earth? To give him a chance to humble the king. To tell him, you still have a chance. You still got this. So look what Daniel did. So this is the interpretation. So he tells him, they shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over you, till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. And as much as they gave the command to leave the stump and roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you after you come to know that heaven rules. He's going to leave a little bit. If you come back and believe in God and humble yourself and know who God is and who you are, then he will return everything to you. So, and then he told him, <laughs> this is the part that it's just, Astonishing. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Let my advice be acceptable. So this is what God said to you. But let me advise you. The king is going now to be what? Lectured by Daniel. Daniel is going to instruct the king. Daniel is going to teach the king. Daniel is going to tell the king what to do. Right? We cannot do that if we are not filled with the Holy Spirit. You cannot speak the word of God because nowadays we, we're all just, you know, racing out there trying to, you know, some of us hiding because we're Christian and some of us want to declare we're Christian, but we just want to speak up. We just want to speak and say it in a loud voice. But without being gentle, you can never give people instructions if I'm not gentle and I have the Spirit of God in me. Okay? Look what he tells him. He tells him the following. O king, let my advice be acceptable, even in the way he is. Be acceptable. If you accept it, good. To you, break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps... There may be len lengthening of your prosperity. Can you stand in front of a king and say, you know, repent? <laughs> huh? Sometimes we, we have we have hard time that a priest, that it's his job actually, like to, to, to declare God's word to people and say, repent. Sometimes we have that trouble, like 
abuna, like a priest tells me to repent, who are you to tell me that? Sometimes we have that, uh, you know. One time I remember, you know, um, a while ago, like uh, I uh, sometimes I have, like before we start giving communion, I stand and say, uh, please be mindful that to to partake of this uh, uh, Eucharist, this sacrament, you have to be believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And you have to be living a life of repentance, having a father of confession, and seeing him regular. I used to do that, and sometimes I still do it. So after the liturgy, I have one of the youth coming. Avuna, how dare you tell us such a thing? This is something between me and God. I deserve to take communion. Okay. Sorry. Maybe it's not my place, but I still told the truth. Right? I was young, younger, so I think uh, maybe I, I didn't handle it uh, the best. But uh, now looking back at it, like maybe I could have done different. But what I'm bringing up here is like sometimes I don't want to be told what to do. And in today's world, this is a no. me what to do rest assured most likely i'm gonna do the opposite right and then we get into it's me how do you say me i and myself i listen to me and i follow myself so that me can enjoy the world okay and then the watcher comes down and says uh-uh no good Let's bring some chastening here, okay? And we'll leave, I'll give you a chance to repent. So this is Daniel, and he gives uh, Napakas Nazar an advice. All this came upon King Napakas Nazar. Look at this. At the end of how many? Huh? 12 months. So not right away. So, so for 12 months, Nabuchadnezzar Nazar was given a chance. Think about it twice. Think again. Maybe you should follow the advice of Daniel. I'll give you a little bit more time. Maybe 12 months is good, but after 12 months, that's it. And then what happened? He saw walking about. Uh, he was walking, King Nabuchadnezzar Nazar. He was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. Now, look now how this tree in the center start to see itself. The king spoke saying, did I tell you I, me and myself? Look at look how many times he's going to say I, me, myself. The king spoke saying, is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power? And for the honor of my majesty, how many times? Hmm? Yeah, three times. I have built my mighty power, my majesty. It's me. While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven, a voice from heaven, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you, and they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and it gives it to whomever he chooses. That very hour, the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven. His hair had grown like um, eagles, feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. Can you imagine? At that moment, Nafika's Nazar, uh, some interpreters, they say like it, it was kind of a, um, some kind of a, um, an insanity fell upon him, and, and like Lots of hair, 
like uh, nails too uh, very long and like beard and he was eating the grass like animals he became like an animal and many times when we leave god when we feel like i am the center of the universe i become an animal and each one of us we have an animal inside right sometimes i find myself like i'm i'm like a bull wants to you know charge at people sometimes i find myself like um yeah like some uh you know uh, uh you know some other beasts or animals want to you know take as much as i want and when i let go of god god says you want to be an animal an animal be an animal so be careful that what kind of animal inside each one of us okay if we have a little bit more time we could of uh explore a little bit different types of beasts that could be inside each one of us but i can leave that with you for some kind of a self examination what kind of an animal that is in me that needs to be chastened by god's spirit okay so and at the end of the time i nafikas nazar lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me and i blessed the most high and praised and honored him who lives forever what's the first thing that he did what's the first thing he did lifted his eyes to heaven and before he fell what did he do hmm before he fell what, what what did he do it says in verse 28 and 29 he was walking and he saw he looked at everything so basically like he was looking at uh everything that he did he looked at the earthly things okay and he attributed all of that to himself but when he started coming back to god he lifted his eyes to heaven so without me lifting my eyes to heaven that is prayer i can never attribute anything to god i have to always be looking at heaven to acknowledge god to work with god to allow god to work through me daniel is an agent of god each and every one of us is an agent of god nabuchodonosor nazar is an agent of god but for him to reach that point it took god a lot of time and a lot of harsh things and but nabuchodonosor nazar you notice that he was not ashamed even to say all of the uh all of the harsh things that god did with him in order to bring him and make him work with god okay look what he wrote after that beautiful and you can compare he says for his dominion god's dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation all the inhabitants of the earth are uh rebuted as nothing he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth no one can restrain his hand or say to him what have you done at the same time my reason returned to me and for the glory of my kingdom and my honor and splendor returned to me my counselors and nobles re restored to me i was restored to my kingdom and excellent majesty was added to me 
you see how 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 God can 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 make that change. Okay. Sometimes we question God's power. And sometimes we think like I can do it myself. I don't need God. Or maybe I can just allow God in a very small, tiny place. I can be just impressed by God. I can just, you know, uh, um, come to church, you know, take communion. Just be a, maybe a kind of like good Christian sometimes. But some other times I, I you know, I, I want, I want my space. I want my area. I don't want God to come in there until God comes in and hits hard. Okay. Yes. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, literally. And he was tied in a in a brass and, and in chains. They had to chain him because he was like going wild. Literally. Yes. Yes, when he acknowledged God, then his sanity came back to him. Because in us, there are these two parts. There's the animal part. If you allow it, it will just rule over you. Right? And St. Paul says that in, in Romans. He says, you know, there in me, there's something like what I want to do. What I want to do, which he knows that this is a godly. He does not do. And the things that he does not want to do, those he end up doing. And he says, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I'm just crazy. I'm going crazy. Hi, Baba. Yes, sir, Peter. Huh? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, sorry. Sorry, everyone. No problem. Okay. You know, so it, it, it's it's like that. And like the, um, the prodigal son, the very first step for him to return, it said what? He returned to himself. He returned to himself and look, like God, my father has everything. So unless we have that connection, we have that relationship with God, we really could easily go uh, crazy. Yes. What do you mean? Yes. Yeah, and St. Paul speaks about that uh, in Galatians, like when, when the body desires against the spirit and the spirit desires against the flesh. And the two of them, like in, in, in always in, in this fight. Yes. So the animal, when I disregard God's spirit and I want just everything to satisfy my flesh, then I go crazy. And I start even like the things that even clear, you know, clear making sense should not do them. I start justifying them to myself. If you can pull that verse for simple, you know, the things that I, uh, <laughs> in, it's in Romans, right? Any questions, comments, or like, if you want to share, like what something like touched you today or like stood out for you, you found it? Roman, Romans 7, 19. Wait, Romans 7? Yeah. Okay. It is, but it's not me. Yeah. It's like when I decide to let go of God, I become an animal. Yeah, I'm chained to the desires. Uh, seven, uh, which verse? Yeah. Um, yeah. So in 15, for what I'm doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, <laughs> that I do. If then I do what I 
will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that will, that will, dwells in me. That beast that's sitting inside me and has those desires when I allow it to go crazy, you know, I want to be the center of everything. You know, I want the pleasures of this world. I want to whatever. I want to go party, drink, dance, and have sex, and you know, and all of that. I want to eat good. I want to eat until you know, uh, as much as I want. Then I'm allowing that beast to take over. Yeah. Thank you, Maria. Yeah. So. Uh, three things that uh, maybe stood out for you can share you're back <laughs> lovely to see you yeah uh, any please share yes Mario um, well I like that the king is not prone to despair like he was not at this point and he's still like there was still some effort or some work that he put in like it wasn't all God like he returned, like you said, he returned to himself. So he put in the effort. Yeah. And realized that, like, I, I know God, I have a promise. I'm just going to go back to him, like the prodigal son. Very good. Yeah. He had, he knew, like, he had a promise. If you do this, I'll bring everything back to you. If you don't, that's your choice. So many times we have, we have to make that choice. Thank you. He knew he had to do something and he had the choice. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Uh, another one. Second one. Yeah. 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 Instead of, you know, having avoided the whole situation, you're still trying to solve yourself and have to deal with the question. Yeah. Good. Very good. So we all have that uh, conscious or the Holy Spirit speaking to us or the holy men or the church or the Bible speaking to me saying, you know, and we have to make a choice. <laughs> That's good. So pay attention to the voice of God. Mm -hmm. What is that? Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Huh. And then the large washing, and then it fell off my head. But the big fishes. So I thought it was a fish. So I like swam away from it. And then it touched me again. I swam away from it again. And so only to realize with the glasses, because now I'm blind, I can't see my glasses. And it just got stuffed away to see. Oh, my goodness. Still getting all my face. Okay. And I could have still see. Lovely, Alicia. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. So for those who uh, maybe did not hear it well, she was swimming and then uh, she had the glasses holding it on your in your hand. No, oh, yeah. She put it on her head and was uh, swimming and then it, it swept away with the waves. And it was like touching her once and like, oh, no, it's a fish. And then I, again, I thought like it's a fish. Let me swim away. But she had that voice inside her like, maybe I can should grab like stretch my hand and grab it. And she didn't. So. <laughs> I mean. When you say it like that, it does make sense. You know, you can use it as a metaphor. But, you know, yeah. my thing is just like the little voices in your head sometimes tell you things. Yeah. And you kind of ignore them sometimes. And then it's almost yeah. like an immediate, like, you should have listened kind of scenario. Good. Uh, always the voices that we have, like speaking back to us, it's important to always like uh, uh, express them with someone else, you know, like in this case, yeah, it's different, but like, uh, yeah, okay. good. No. When I said gut feelings, like from India, I got feelings, like people can still go against it. And I'm like, a strong believer that gut feelings are like God's way to do something like I, I truly believe I believe it's like a whole yeah. 
you go against that instinct of your gut feeling. But also be careful with those gut feelings because sometimes they could be uh, detrimental and dangerous. And, and the world around us always pushing this idea. Trust your gut feeling. Trust your gut feeling. Trust your feelings. Really trust the emotions. Huh? Yeah. 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 In that vein, yeah, and then still not listen to it. That's where the difference comes. Good. Um, usually, like St. Paul says, like, um, uh, for we bring all thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. Any thought, I have to bring it to the obedience of Christ and captive, captive, like you know, like you, you tie it up. You tie it up with some, like, bring those thoughts and bring it in front of God and say, Lord Jesus Christ, I'm bringing these thoughts to your obedience. Tell me. And, of course, at that moment, like, I should be reading my Bible daily, right? And, and like, you know, in my prayers and having that relationship with God. So to examine the spirits. The Bible tells us, examine the spirits, examine the thoughts, right? Uh yeah, and at some point, yeah, true, like if my gut feeling, like guided by the Holy Spirit. But how do I know those feelings and those gut feelings, like guided by the Holy Spirit? I have to be careful. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Don't just say, you know, because <laughs> this is very dangerous oh, nowadays. <laughs> yeah. No, very good. Any last thought or comment? Because Adil is not here and I'm over time by five minutes. <laughs> last thought. Well, first of all, I think you started law school. That was like, 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 I don't know what's going to But you know, it's not from the world if it's like backed up physically. Like, you can find something. Yes. Yes, absolutely. If if this feeling is backed up by the word of God from the Bible, uh, yeah, or like guided by another person, holy person like in the church or someone I know I trust, a counselor, a servant, you know, priest or like a uh, family member that I know I can trust. Sure. Yeah. Very good. God bless you. So as you know, we are moving to chapter five. Uh, this was the end of uh, this was the end of uh, Napika's Nazar. Oh, so the last verse, he says, now I, Balchester, uh, uh, Napika's Nazar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. All of those works are truth and his way justice. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. Those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. Okay, so that's the end of Napaka's Nazar. Next week, the first word in chapter 5 is Balshazar. Balshazar is not Daniel. Daniel is Balthushazar. <laughs> Okay, this guy is named Belshazzar, and Belshazzar, the king, so this is a new king, and this king is going to mess around with the consecrated things of God, is going to mess around with God's holy things, okay? If you ever heard the saying, uh, the writing is on the wall. Have you heard of uh, have you ever heard of this saying? Okay. If you want to know where it comes from, next time when we meet, you will find out. We're not going to be here next Monday. We're going to be here back the following Monday, which is going to be September uh, 11th. September 11th. Everyone stay home. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, come here. Come here. September 11th. Uh, we will be here, God willing, 
um, nine, and we will see what's happening to the writings on the wall. Uh, glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.